This is a rattleback. It has a rather curious behavior that when spun in one direction, it reverses, while it's spun the other way, it simply rotates. This asymmetry can be traced to the fact that the shape of the bottom is not symmetric. It's higher on this side than it is on this. Let's see that again, close up. To understand the reversal, we will break the process down into three steps. First, when it rotates clockwise, the first thing you notice is that it oscillates about its short axis, in other words, like this. That can be explained mathematically, but the calculation is not easy. This is the only step which I will leave incomplete. The next step is based on energy conservation. Since the rattleback moves in such a way that the point of contact does not skid, the force applied to it does no work. Thus, energy is conserved. The initial amount of energy in the rattleback is given by this. One half, this is the moment of inertia about the vertical axis, about this axis. And n represents the angular velocity that it initially has. Now, as the oscillation grows, that is the rotation about this short axis, that takes up energy. The amount of energy it takes up is given here. It's one half the moment of inertia now about this axis times the angular frequency for the rocking motion times the amplitude of that motion. Now, Lx is comparable to Lz. Omega sub x, the angular frequency for this, is quite high, certainly higher than n. The amplitude, that's the amplitude in radians, you expect to be something of maybe 0 0.1, 0 0.2. The final result is, is that this quantity, in fact, will be comparable to this. In other words, as the oscillation grows, it takes all of the initial energy. That means that the rattleback must stop its rotation. We now come to the third and final step of the reversal process. The rattleback is no longer rotating, but it is oscillating. If I look at a cross-section of the rattleback in some phase of this oscillation, we would have something like this. This is the point of contact. This is the center of mass. The force mg will tend to rotate this to the right. That means the center of mass will be accelerated to the right, and thus there's a force at this point of contact to the right. If I look at the rattle back from above, I would have this. This is the center of mass. This is the force applied at this cross-section. But this force here tends to rotate the rattle back around in a counterclockwise direction. So it will no longer simply continue to simply rock, but will start rotating in a counterclockwise direction, and the reversal is now complete.